Hi everybody, welcome to the Dive Brief. In today's video, I'm gonna be focusing on reels and spools because they are an essential tool that every scuba diver should have with them on every single dive. I usually dive with at least one or two of them just in case because every scuba diver should be diving with a DSMB or at least some kind of surface marker buoy so that boats on the surface know exactly where you are. And of course you need some kind of line to attach yourself to it. But there are plenty of different designs which can complicate things if you don't know what you're doing, especially when you're first starting out, you don't know the specific details why you would go for a reel over a spool or vice versa. This is what the dive brief is for. Let's take a closer look. So first up, we're looking at a pretty basic plastic spool, something like the DIR Zone 16 meter spool. It's gonna have a very light, simple plastic spool, a bit like this. Obviously, it's gonna have some line on it, but it's gonna look something like this. These are the most basic, and they work for pretty much all types of diving. Now, they're gonna come with different amounts of line on them, and they're, they're basically, the, the different length of line is depending on what you're really using it for. So for most recreational divers, especially if you're first starting out, you're gonna look for something like 15 or 10 meters of line, because that's all you really need just to send up a DSMB at the end of the dive to do your safety stop. They're pretty cheap, they're pretty light, uh, they tuck away nice and easy. All you're gonna get is that line wrapped on it and a double end bolt snap. Other than basic spools, you can get fancier spools, and calling them plastic spools would do it a disservice because something like the Pandora Lab spool, this has sort of upgraded materials. The materials itself of the spool are much nicer. It's not a cheap plastic, it's a, it's a fancier thermoplastic. The sides of the spool itself, instead of being parallel, they're actually flared a little bit. And that makes it a lot easier to wind on your line because it acts as a sort of funnel to give you a bit more area to, uh, to wind onto it. And the line itself, instead of just any old two or three mil braided line. This is Lumen line, which actually glows in the dark. So when you're shopping around, you're looking at different spools, even though they're the same size and they have the same amount of line on them, it is very important to see if there are sort of any alternatives and some of them are definitely worth investing in. Sticking with the spool design, nice and simple, but instead of a plastic spool, you can also find aluminium spools, like the Apex Lifeline spool. So this one that I've chosen, this is a 30 meter spool, so it has slightly more line on it, makes it a bit more practical. You can send up DSMBs from a greater depth, but you can also use it for laying down guidelines in a pinch. But the aluminium is lighter, it's a lot stronger, it is more expensive, it's much more of an investment, but it still has those benefits of flared sides and everything, but in an aluminium case, so it's much stronger. You still have fancy line on it. You still come with a, a double ender. So if you're looking to invest a little bit more, have a tougher spool that's less likely to break, especially if you drop a tank on it, then something like this is much stronger than a plastic spool. Now, whilst most scuba divers are diving with spools nowadays because they're much more compact and neat, you can still find ratchet reels. So reels are a bit larger, something like the Apex Ascent reel. Uh, so they'll have a separate handle with a spool that rotates on it and a ratchet system with normally a spring-loaded thumb drive or some kind of mechanism that locks the spool in position. So these are more designed for cold water diving or something where dexterity is limited because you're wearing thick gloves. So with a small compact little spool, trying to fiddle around with the line can be quite hard if you're wearing really thick heavy neoprene gloves or dry gloves. So divers in colder waters end up with larger spools because they have a proper handle and a proper mechanism. The end of the line normally has a little toggle on the end of it so you can get hold of it and make life a little bit easier. And then when you're paying out line, all you have to do is hold down that little plunger and the ratchet will pay out, let go of it, and it will lock it in position. So you have more control where you have limited dexterity. 
So most reels and spools like that, they are specifically designed to be multi-purpose. Most people are gonna use them for sending up DSMBs when you're under the water, or whatever you need a certain tether under the water. Something that isn't load-bearing, but something that can maybe get you back out to where you started, some kind of guideline. But there are specific guideline reels out there. Something like the DIR Zone 200 meter reel. These are typically much bigger, they have a lot of line wound onto them and they'll have a grub screw kind of screw drive instead of a ratchet mechanism it's just something that you can unscrew and then just pay out line consistently as you're swimming into an overhead environment like a cave or a shipwreck you tie it to something at the beginning and then you kind of lay that line a bit like a, uh, a breadcrumb trail so you can always find your way out. So as you're swimming along, it's got a separate handle. It just continually pays out line. And then when you're done, you can screw it in and lock it in position or when you're heading back out, you can wind it back on. They typically have a guide at the beginning. Instead of just a flared spool, it actually has a kind of letterbox that the line has to go through so that you can wind it back in neatly. So there are three basic styles of reels. You get spools, which most divers tend to use. They're kind of the, the common current uh, sort of thing that most divers are using because they're really easy to use, they're nice and compact, and they simply do the job without any moving parts. They're, they're very easy to use. You then get reels, which do have moving parts and a ratchet mechanism, but they're more designed for cold water where you don't have the dexterity to deal with a small, uh, fiddly little spool. And then you get cave lines or guidelines that have a lot of line on them, but they're more designed for laying down a guideline so that you can always find yourself out of a, uh, an overhead environment. All of these, they're available on our website, simplyscuba.com. There'll be a link down in the description below to check them out. Thank you for watching, and of course, safe diving. Ooh.